What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 61 of Park to Prem here with Tower Lord Town. Today we're taking on Leighton Orient and I know when I say that it's not the most exciting of fixtures perhaps. It doesn't spark your interest too much but believe me when I say it's two of the informed teams in the, the division going head to head. We're away from home. You can get a little sneak peek of the league table here. This is a big game for us and we really need to win it in order to truly believe that we can get promoted this year. We're in a good position though in second and this could be a bit of a defining game for us. Anyway, there's quite a lot to get through today. It's one of those episodes where I've got a big long list of things to do. Of course, last time I left you, it was Sheffield Wednesday, two days before the transfer deadline and I tried to sign some players. I did. There were two players I looked at, two strikers. I thought, you know what? If we're going to spend some of this money from the small yo sale anywhere, let's make it on strikers. So the first player I looked at was Doug Dale here. Really loved the look of him. I think Southampton wanted £350,000. I was willing to break the wage budget to get him in. I was willing to give him £11,000 a week. Our current highest earner is on £3,000 a week. Now, we do have about 30000 spare in the wage budget, so the money was there to be spent. He ends up going to Hull City for almost half the amount of money that we offered him. We just don't have that pulling power, despite the fact, you know, we're going strong in the league. So that was a shame. And then I had a rebound plan. I, I thought, plan B, um, Dong Dehe, or Dong Dehe, I'm sorry, but I'm definitely pronouncing it wrong. A player who kind of, kind of caught my eye last year in League 2. He could be a good addition to our team. Um, so I tried to sign him for £100,000. And he went to Blooming Hull as well. So basically, Hull City, I don't like you. I went to the University of Hull. I, uh, he said, I don't like the badge. I, I, I don't like Hull. Now, I've changed my tune. Not a fan. So that was a bit of a, a down note, I guess, going into the transfer market. Uh, you know, towards the end, not necessarily making panic transfers, but just trying to see what we could do. If you were wondering, by the way, about Andrei Shvetsov, fantastic player. No work permit. Yeah, I, I, I appealed the work permit. I can't appeal for another four months. So he probably isn't going to play for us this year. And I probably, come January, need to sort out a loan move for him, which is a huge shame because he's absolutely blooming incredible as the 18-year-old. You can see a Premier League potential, currently a League One quality striker. But because he's Russian, because Alexander can't fudge some paperwork for us being chairman, I thought he might have links in Russia or something. Um, Andre, you know, our second favourite Andre behind Peter Andre cannot join us. So he's sat in the under-23s. I think he can maybe play under-23s football. Either way, I need a plan B. It's probably going to be to loan him out. I am a little bit scared that it could go the way of Dimitriou, where we end up having to sell him for some money, um, you know, rather than actually make something of him, which is a shame because there's him and there's also here Koklov, um, who's another one of the Russian players that we agreed to sign a while ago now. He's finally joined us too. I would be really interested to know, where would you play this guy? What, what would you do with him? Because I feel like you can do quite a lot of different things with this player. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm training him to play right wing back. Indeed we are, as a wing-back on support. Um, I feel like if he could get the pace into his game, he's got the well-roundedness to be a pretty decent little wing-back. Now, he might never quite get the pace, but um, he could be a really, really kind of good, versatile centre midfielder right-back. I'm thinking Jordan Henderson, James Milner-like for Yegor here. Um, I'm saying all of this. I'm planning for all of this. He's not got a work permit again, so I'm not bitter, honestly. Okay, maybe I am a little bit. But you can see here, both players have got contracts for the next five years. So, I mean, hopefully they get work permits. Otherwise, we should be able to get a hopefully quite a pretty sum of money for them. Anyway, I originally came to the youth screen here because I wanted to look at loans. Because we've done a lot of loans in and out. And in terms of the loans in, I'm trying not to rely on the players too much. Even if they would be improvements to the first team, I would much rather lean on our actual players that we own and that are here for the long run and kind of just use them as a little bit of squad depth. But in terms of the loans out, a few of our players are doing quite well and deserve a little bit of a mention. So we'll start with Melvin Erekart, who has gone to Bolton, our favourite club in the world. Really, really like this guy. Left mid, he's played three games for them, two goals, three assists, and um, he has also scored two penalties. So really good start to his loan. I know someone's going to ask, Jack, what's happening with Bolton? Tell us about Bolton. They're currently fifth in the Vanarama National North. So they're trying to spark a recovery. You can see they've won their last five games. And maybe Erekart, who is now listed as their key player, 
he is the man to make the difference for them. You can see here as well, McCulloch has gone on loan to Matlock Town. A few of these players who have gone out on loan players who I would love to sell longer term, so the fact he's doing well on loan helps us out a ton. Um, you can see here a few of the other players who got out on loan. Sam Horn at Stainstown. I have very high hopes for Sam. Homegrown at Tallaw. Good little player. Has played seven matches so far, showing plenty of signs of improvement. Hopefully he can continue those improvements. One thing that I do feel like has gone massively under the radar is just how much we've improved our youth academy level and our youth recruitment. Of course, the training and youth training facilities, they're, they're lacking a little bit, but we're hopefully going to have those upgraded over the summer. But we are actually producing some pretty good young prospects. The, the big challenge really is, can we develop them? And obviously, the, the lack of youth facilities and training facilities is a little bit of a bottleneck there. But in the coming years, I'm quite keen to see what we can achieve. Anyway, in terms of other little bits of news, I guess we should talk about the games since you were last here because we've played a decent chunk of them. We've played seven to be precise, only four in the league. We have had an international break in here which involved a load of games getting postponed. I had the option to postpone it because we had Smolio and a few other players away on international duty. I decided to take that up. I, I'm the kind of person who likes to chase teams rather than... Uh, I feel like set a really high benchmark. I would rather have games in hand and be trailing than kind of be looking over our shoulders at teams who could possibly overtake us and not really being able to control things. So let's talk about these games. Um, you will notice two games in the EFL Trophy North. I absolutely hate the EFL Trophy. I don't see the point in it. I think it's been ruined by the rules that have been brought in. Stuff like bonus points for the winner of a penalty shootout in the group stages, the under-23 teams from Championship and Premier League clubs joining. But you can see here, we've played only two of our three games, and we are going to be going through alongside Macclesfield Town. Um, we beat Rochdale 5-0 here. You can see a real variety of goal scorers, which is nice. And we also beat Manchester United. And now, I'm, I'm just going to pretend the competition doesn't exist and hide it. Because I don't like it. So, now that we've pretended that doesn't exist, you can see the remainder of the games. The games that truly matter. And, well, it started off with a fixture against Fleetwood. And they took the lead early on in this game, which was, well, not exactly ideal. We'd been on a really good run going into this game. You know, we'd only lost one game in the league. And to go a goal down was a bit of a gut punch. Leighton Stewart did get us back into the game via a penalty. But not long before half-time, Derek Finch with another goal for Fleetwood. And it was 2-1 all the way until the 87th minute, when an unlikely hero scored a, a rather scrappy goal. But it was Ballo with it, the Austrian, a player who has had a, his fair share of injuries, is on an amount of money that really doesn't represent the role he plays in the first team. He's on far, far too much. But at least he did score in this game and prove a little bit of, a, I guess, his money's worth. You can see how he looks here. He, he's an OK player. I thought he'd have a much bigger impact on the team last season. He hasn't really done what we wanted him to do but he did get a goal in this game and he has also chipped in with an assist in only three appearances on off the bench so maybe he can become a kind of semi-reliable player but he bailed us out here so I, I guess I owe him a little bit anyway the next game against Northampton we wanted to get back to winning ways and I thought we were going to when in the 80th minute Mampala with a superb little run took the ball into the bottom corner on off the bench he came for Leighton Stewart and uh, well I thought well that's the impact we need unfortunately though he was denied uh, by a 91st minute goal. Doug Bowerman with it. And, uh, well, Northampton, you might look at that and go, that seems like an unlikely draw, a disappointing draw perhaps. Northampton, no disrespect to Northampton, but you don't think of them as a powerhouse team. You can see in this save game here, they got relegated all the way down to the National League in 2021. They then got three promotions in four years to go all the way to the Championship. They finished rock bottom of that league last year, but... Yeah, they're a good little team. They've got all those promotions. I was curious if they've had a takeover. They haven't. They've just been very well managed. Um, they're currently sixth in the league. So I guess a draw wasn't the worst of results. But at the same time, being ahead for so long in the game, or not for so long in the game, but so late into the game, it was a bit of a gump gut punch. Anyway, the next game we had against Exeter, we had a bit of a, a mini injury crisis at right back. And that crisis was made worse by Keith Kelly Evans, who got sent off in this game. Very disappointed in you, Keith. Very, very disappointed. But yes, we won it 3-1. Let's see the highlights here. Jacobs, with his banana boots, got us ahead in this game. And, you know, 20 minutes gone, goal ahead, kind of relaxing a little. What happened? Three minutes later, Keith, through the back of his man, two-footed. We're down a man for the last 70 minutes of the game. Would you have known that? 
Absolutely not, because Michael Jacobs just two minutes later got us a goal. And then Mampala in the 27th minute with an incredibly tidy finish. I loved this. I kind of got out my seat and started applauding. Chipped the keeper to make it 3-0 at half-time. Uh, if you were wondering, we ditched the centre-attacking mid and kind of went with a 4-1 four, four of sorts, I guess, was the formation we were playing. They did score late in the game in the 90th minute, so another game where that late goal denies us a clean sheet, but it didn't deny us any points. 3-1 it finished, great result. We then took on Lincoln City in the EFL Cup. We won that 2-0, and you might notice a very exciting fixture further down the fixture list here. Yes, tomorrow, Manchester City and Ipswich is going to be a double header. So exciting times here. And then, well, most recently, we took on Burton from the penalty spot. Leighton Stewart made it 1-0. And Leighton Stewart just doesn't miss penalties, folks. He scored three out of three this year. Can we look at his penalty scoring record for previous years? He scored four out of four in the league the year before. Two out of two in the National League. He, he didn't score any in the National League North. D did, okay, uh, now it starts to get less impressive, doesn't it? Where he just wasn't on penalties for the first few seasons. But basically, I don't think he's ever missed a penalty for the club. And I think he scored six or seven in the league. That is a pretty good pretty good return. I'm, I'm waiting for the day where he misses one. It'll probably be today in this match that we've got coming up, won't it? That would be pretty typical. Anyway, you can see, since the Burton game, we've had a two-week break. That was... Um, entirely optional. I decided to take up uh, the league up on it because we had players on international duty. So if we just look at the league table right now, we currently sit in second with only one defeat. It was that game against Colchester. Um, but you'll notice, compared to the teams behind us, we've got two games in hand. Now, even if we were to win our game in hand, we would still be training Charlton by five points, which really gives you an idea of just how much they are running away with the league. Their only draw has come against Bristol Rovers, who are down in 10th, but they have been in really, really good form. They've beaten the likes of Ipswich, uh, they've beaten Leighton Orient as well, they've beaten the teams in and around them. In our next couple of games, we've got some huge fixtures. We've got Ebbsfleet soon, we've got Leighton Orient today, obviously. Next episode, we've got Ipswich Town, who are currently even on points with us, albeit with a couple extra games played. Um, it's going to be an incredibly competitive year, but I do like the position we're in with games in hand. We have had our fair share of injuries as well, which has been pretty impressive. If we just look at injuries as of late, you can see here, uh, Jacobs has been out with a bruised shin. Joseph Speed, who was that centre-back kind of backup option we brought in from Manchester United. Um, whilst he's improved a lot recently, he's pulled his ankle ligaments very, very recently, so he's not on the bench for today's game. Rush was out with a twisted ankle for four weeks, so that was uh, another right-back injury. You can see here he has declined a little bit as a result of that. We'll hope that um, he's going to be fighting back to full fitness. Of course, Liam Coyle has missed two months so far this year through injury. He is another one of our players who you would probably put immediately behind Rush. I mentioned the fact that uh, Keith Kelly, uh, we've been playing him at right back. He then went and got sent off. There was a situation where our three first choice right backs just weren't available. And as a result, we had to bring in Patterson. And that's not exactly ideal because Patterson's okay. But he's not League One quality. I mean, look at it. National League quality. Um, we definitely have a strength and depth issue of sorts, especially in the defence. Uh, obviously, we have Oli Younger who can play centre-back. His quality is National League. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a growing concern, but at least we've weathered the initial storm with the right-back position. We do really rely on Gannon and Embleton, though. That is almost certain. You can see here, Smolio is out for 6 to 12 days, so... That's not ideal. Not available for selection. So, Okonkwo, the world's strongest goalkeeper, is in net for us. 16 strength, 19 jumping reach, 17 aerial reach. How tall is this man? How tall, how tall are you? Let's have a look. Information. Where, where is tallness? Tallness. Height is what I'm trying to say. I, I'm 197 centimetres. What is that for like the rest of the world slash non-Europeans? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the conversion now. Because I feel like it's necessary. He's six foot four and a half. He's an absolute giant of a man in goal. He doesn't even need to jump. He just kind of picks the ball out of the air. Anyway, we'll, we'll see what he can do for us today. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to talk about. But I don't think there is. Other than the fact we've had a few players come into some form. Shuttleworth, he won player of the month, everyone. You might wonder, how's he managed that? Andre Dezel was out injured. He played centre mid for us. He played centre mid really, really well. Now, this does lean into my theory that deep-line playmakers, at least in the current match engine, do just seem to get massively inflated average ratings. But make no mistake, he could do a job at centre-mid for us. He is quite well-suited as well to playing as a deep-line playmaker. 
Um, maybe we need to start looking at converting him because I will eternally be concerned about nine acceleration for a player in the wide area. I just I struggle to look past it. I I'm, I call me a FIFA player, but I like my speed in the wide area. That's just the way it is. Another player who's done very very well actually is and if I can find him, where, where are you? Where where are you, Jacob? There you are, Jacob. So with his banana boots on, he got runner up in player of the month. You might wonder how's he managed that. Um, when we played him down the middle, he plays much much better. I talked about this at the start of the year. And Kololo, I was thinking we would play down the middle with Jacobs on the right. I moved Jacobs down the middle, and he absolutely is just doing bits for us there. So we have to stick with him there. That does mean that for poor Benny, he does find himself on the bench, and he had a really good start to his time at the club. He has dropped off the pace just a little bit, but he's still an exceptional player to have on the bench, so not overly concerned there. Anyway, in terms of team for today's game, back four is at full strength. Coyle comes back into the team for one of the first appearances of the year. Obviously, he's had a lot of injuries as of late, so good to have him back. Shuttleworth on the right. We're going to see what he can do. As I already mentioned, a lot of his best performances have come down the, the centre mid position. I'm hoping that he can translate some of that form and some of that confidence into the right mid area. DKM, oh, I, I need more from you, boy. I need more from you. He's not scored. He's got one assist in the league so far. Um, he could find his head on the chopping block. You can see in terms of other players here on the bench, we've got options. Manpal has been very, very good. Six goals to his name. Stuart with eight goals to his name. Goal scoring from our strikers, not a problem. We just need the likes of DKM and Shuttleworth and really the players in the wide area to show us what they're made of. Um, but across the board, when you look at the la recent form in the last five games, on the whole, very, very positive. And that will give us some hope going into t today's game. So yes, away from home here against Leighton Orient, as we've already touched upon, they have won a lot of their recent games. They are a team who are playing very, very well. They're certainly in the ascendancy. We sit second in the league. I believe if we were to lose this game, they would jump ahead of us. And there's also two or three other teams who could also do the exact same. Of course, we've got those games in hand, so we're not going to start panicking too soon. But given the fact we've got a few games for the remainder of this month ahead of the Manchester City game in the EFL Trophy that are going to be big for us, we really, really need a good result. And I realise I've said EFL Trophy there. I mean the EFL Cup or the Carabao Cup, if you want to call it by its sponsor name, to keep things simple. Anyway, what can we do here? Jacobs to Liam Coyle, distributes it to Stewart, lurking in the wide areas. Crunching tackle, but James Norris comes away with it. Run, James. He's not great defensively as Mr Norris, but he can run and he can put the ball in the box. It falls to Stewart, hits it. Just over the crossbar, but... A good side of intent. 60% of possession in the first 10 minutes, whilst I'm not going to get overly kind of carried away because now it's back to 50-50. We've, we've not let them start fast. You know, we've kept our hold on this game at least initially. And you can see, again, possession after 25 minutes, very much in our favour, but not too many chances either way. Half an hour gone, they've got a set piece here. Batista whips it in. Corners, by the way, I was about to say, corners, by the way, we're having a lot of issue defending, and I think that might be down to Embleton and, and um, Gannon's lack of heading and just a general lack of aerial ability. I, I don't know if that necessarily comes into this here, but whipped to the back post, headed down by Lawford, and then, I mean, who is that there? Name and shame them. It was Embleton, just letting his man get ahead of him, and they find the back of the net, and it's 1-0 late in Orin, and an unusual position perhaps for us. I feel like a lot of the games this year that we've slipped up in, we've been ahead in and we've thrown away the lead. We now need to fight back. We now need to show a bit of spirit here. Stewart bringing the ball forward. DKM on the overlap. DKM skips past his man. Can he get the ball into the box? He squares it to Norris. The left back who hits it into the side netting. For a, for a second, I thought we were going to see a Jamal Lewis-esque finish. If you saw that goal by the left back for Norwich against Leicester uh, at the weekend, you know exactly what I was talking about there. If you're watching this in six months' time, go Google it. 1-0 Leicester v Norwich on the 28th of February 2020. Oh, my word. What are you doing, you wazzock? Who was that? I think it was Gannon. It was Coyle. Bloody... Co I mean, what was that? They have a penalty. A Conquo. Make yourself a hero, mate. Make your... He's, he's just fallen over. It's not great goalkeeping from the penalty, but you can't really rely on your goalkeeper to stop penalties. He just kind of sits down. Is he okay? 
it's 2-0. This is, this is not the result we need. We've been in really good form. I talked about that situation of, I enjoy chasing. You know, I enjoy having games in hand and hunting down the teams ahead. I do also like it when you're ahead of the teams behind you, knowing that you've also got game in hand. Or, yeah, game in, game in hand. Games in hand, not game in hands. Help me. Right. I'm going to just get shouty, shouty at the players. I don't think there's much more to be done here. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to take off Stuart for Mampala. Coyle's on a booking. I don't really like it. It might be a little bit premature, but I'm going to go for a double change here. As they have another corner. Corners. I, I want to check the team stats for the league for kind of set pieces conceded because it is definitely a kryptonite right now this year. It's just a general lack of success at defending corners. And I don't think it's even free kicks. I think it is just exclusively corners that we're having problems with. Embleton with a nice header. Can we build from the back now? Needham spreads the play to DKM. Man on the overlap is Norris. He's got pace. Can he beat his man? No, he plays it safe. That's what I like to see. Let's hold on to the ball here. Let's not give the ball away there, though. 50 minutes gone. If they were to go three goals ahead, I would hate to admit it, but the game would pretty much be over there and then. Ball lumped forward. Alexander. Gannon wins the header. Gannon has improved his jumping over the years. He still can't head a for Toffee. Quinn crosses in. Deflected. Falls to Lawford. We are getting embarrassed. It's not even been close, folks. It's not even been close. I feel like it's time I feel like it's time for a tactical shuffle. The question is, what do we do? Do we, do we go back to the tried and tested? Do we do we go back to kind of a, a comfort pick of sorts? I think we have to. I'm gonna bring in Ballo, but I'm gonna play Ballo as a false nine. We're gonna go full on Barcelona here. I feel like we need a roll of the dice. And this is the role that I'm willing to go with. Let's change. Need them onto box to box. So we're, we're going to go with an adaptation of our old school 4-4-2. I think. I've got to just drastically change something here. We need a goal. Ballo's coming on to play false nine. Embleton's there. He scores it. I was half expecting the flag to go up. Is there a fight back on? We're switching back to the 4-4-2. A few little tweaks on our old formula, but it's a formation that we've used with good success over the years. We need a plan B, and, well, maybe Embleton scoring that goal can, you know, spark a comeback. Shuttleworth with a superb ball into the box from the dead ball. I'm going to get shouty-shouty at the boys as well here. Look at that good reaction. We've got an hour to try and make something happen. Is it too soon to go very attacking? A absolutely not. I do wonder if we're missing Smolio in goal. He certainly has bailed us out a few times, saving clear cut chances. He should hopefully be back for the Ipswich Town game, who, well, they currently sit in third. They will leapfrog us with this result here. Oh, my word. Lawford has almost scored a screamer. It would have been denied by the offside flag. So, in many ways, it's a good job he missed. I mean, we have 20 minutes here to try and turn things around. Make that 15. Let's go a little bit more direct here, shall we? Let's go a little bit more direct. We've got to press a little bit more as well. Try and get it to the wide areas. I think that's going to be our best bet. Although, we've not really shown a great deal in this game that leads me to believe we're going to get back into it as the ball's whipped in again. We've been very solid defensively by our own standards so far this year. That's not been the case today, though. Mampala, what a run. Can you finish it? Oh, the keeper stops it. If he scores that with 10 minutes left... You truly start to believe. If there's a silver lining to take from this game so far, it's the fact that we don't appear to have given up. We are still very much trying to give them a game here. Of course, going very attacking. We are going to leave ourselves exposed at the back. But when you're three goals down, that doesn't really matter. How many men have they got in the attack here? They've got five players in the box. They pull it to the edge of the box. You, I mean, fair play. I can't even be mad. They committed so many men to the attack there, ladies and Orient. I don't know if that's a, a tad bit of disrespect from them. Just, you know, not throwing caution to the wind. I mean, look at them. They're, like, queuing up. It's like Black Friday and the doors have just opened at the shopping centre. Quinn pulls it to the edge. Batista, the only man who hasn't run into the box, is lurking there. Tidy little finish. And, well, I'm going to hold my hands up and say we have been embarrassed. This is... Not good. Norris whips in. Mampala. He's offside. Don't celebrate. Stop celebrating, Manasse. It remains 4-1 one, uh, one here. What Was he offside? Nah. Ne okay, maybe a little bit. 
Um, <laughs> oh, well, I guess we just have to take our hide in here. This is maybe a little bit of a reality check, although um, obviously we've got a few more big games coming up this month. So I'm not going to react too much. You know, not every team can go unbeaten in the league, as Liverpool demonstrated quite recently. And I fancy us as a little bit of a Liverpool, which means that we're, we're probably going to bottle it or something. I, I know someone's going to make that joke, so I might as well make the joke myself. Either way, 4-1, not a good result. You can see with that Leighton Orient leapfrog us, uh, looking at the teams behind us, it looks like lots of other teams may have slipped up. Ipswich lost 4-0, that helps us out. Um, did MK Dons not play? I don't think they did. Um, Charlton won. I'm pretty sure. Yep, 2 0 against Hull. Of course they did. Uh, what about Northampton? It doesn't seem like every single team played. Northampton drew, so a lot of the results actually in and around us kind of went in our favour, other than, of course, Leighton Orient winning. But we're only one point behind them. You can see their goal difference here, though. Very, very good when compared to ours. They've scored 27 goals. Charlton have conceded one goal, but only scored 16. That is a mental record by Charlton because they're not scoring a ton. Makes you wonder if their defence starts to crumble, maybe they will go tumbling down the league. But at least right now, it's kind of just working for them. And if you don't concede, you can't really lose now, can you? Anyway, that's a little bit of a reality check. We've got Ebbsfleet in our next game, but in terms of when we'll be back next episode, as I've already mentioned, we're going to do a live comfortable header. We've got another tricky away trip to Ipswich Town. They currently sit fifth in the league. And then following on from that, we'll go to the EFL Cup, where we're away from home against Manchester City. So expect a spanking there. Hopefully we can get a result against Ipswich. Um, but a little bit of a reality check here against Leighton Orient. And we have got quite a packed schedule now throughout the remainder of October into November and indeed into December. So squad rotation, we're going to have to make the most of it. That is almost a certainty. But anyway, folks, that's going to wrap up everything from me today. Hopefully you did enjoy today's episode. If you did, drop a like on it. Give me some words of encouragement. Hopefully we can apply for work permits for Andre and co soon and get them successfully. Otherwise, I am going to have to look at getting an affiliate somewhere in Europe to maybe get them European passports. We'll, we'll see if that's even an option. I don't think I can even request that right now, um, get, probably given where we are in the league. Let's have a look. Networking. No, I, I can't. Although, actually, I am looking for another senior affiliate. I want, a, I want an abroad senior affiliate. We'll see if that can happen. Um, that, that, I guess, is a question mark to be had. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to mention here. But I don't think there is. Um, no, we've we've signed a few new scouts. Shretsov didn't get a work permit. I'm I'm a little upset about it, but we'll we'll tr we'll try and cope. Man, he he would be like oh he would be the title changing player. I feel like I feel like he would just smash goals in for fun at this level, and he's only 18. Oh, I'll be so upset if we have to let him go because he doesn't get a work permit. Anyway, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. That's a problem for future jack to worry about and the immediate future is let's not get embarrassed by man city and let's get our league season back on track against ipswich and well hopefully i see you guys tomorrow for that thank you for watching folks i'll see you again soon it's me jack and i will talk to you guys in a bit i'm out